Some people call Bitcoin the gold killer, the asset in times of crisis, the asset that protects against monetary inflation. Now, the reason why people buy gold is this chart. This is a chart of the correlation coefficient of gold versus the S&P 500. When this is close to one, it means the assets move in tandem with one another, the price movements. And this is at zero, it means there is no correlation, there is no connection between the price movements. When it's at minus one, it means the assets always move in opposite directions. Now, when you own a portfolio of several different assets, you do not want your assets to always move in sync, right? Because when there's a crash in one asset and your other asset also crashes, your overall portfolio goes down. When instead you've got assets that are very lowly correlated to one another, then one asset can crash, the other asset still stays fine. Your overall portfolio doesn't have that much volatility, that much price risk. That's the reason why people buy gold. They buy it as an insurance of your overall portfolio. Now that's the correlation coefficient for gold versus the S&P 500. What's the correlation coefficient of Bitcoin versus the S&P 500? It's this chart over here also hovering very close around zero, very much to the opposite of what other people are saying. A lot of people are saying when stocks go up, Bitcoin tends to go up as well. When they go down, Bitcoin tends to go down as well. It's not what we are seeing in the data. The correlation coefficient also hovers around zero, the same way it does for gold. Have a look at this. This is gold versus Bitcoin, also very lowly correlated. So what do we have here? We have three types of assets that have very low correlation to one another. In other words, if you want to build a portfolio that doesn't massively swing up and down and you simply just want to preserve your wealth, accumulate a bit of growth over time, you can simply just buy all three of them. And that's probably the main reason why Wall Street is getting interested in issuing that Bitcoin ETF. It reduces overall portfolio volatility. Now, something is happening recently with gold that not many people are talking about. At least I don't see a lot of videos made on this on YouTube. This is the gold price per ounce. And look how we at least psychologically have quite a bit of a resistance here. $2,050, this is the price that gold is struggling to pass. If you're following this channel for a while, you should know that I don't like US dollar prices. I prefer relative valuations much, much more. Let's look at gold relative to the S&P 500. So let's divide this gold price by the points of the S&P 500 to get relative performance. And at the same time, let's zoom out a lot. This is gold relative to the S&P 500. And this chart is 120 years of data. See those massive swings? The vertical line here is Bretton Woods at the beginning of the 70s. Everybody bought into gold. Gold outperformed stocks by 1,400%. It then crashed throughout the 80s and the 90s relative to stocks because technology really took off. Look at this, minus 97%. So had you bought gold instead of stocks at the beginning of the 80s, you would have lost relative to the person that bought the stocks 97%. Now what you also see on this chart is a moving average. This is a monthly chart, by the way. And this moving average is 120 months long. So a 10 year moving average. Had you just ridden the waves in this manner and you would have allocated to gold once we go above and to stocks once we go below, you would have outperformed quite a bit. Now gold still doesn't look attractive. And maybe Bitcoin is partially to blame for this because some of the capital that simply just went into portfolio diversification in gold might now be in Bitcoin. Let's have a look at another chart. This is gold divided by M2. So how did gold do relative to the money printing? And again, we see massive, massive waves. So is gold an inflation hedge? Sometimes as are stocks. But even with that inflation hedge, you had to see losses of 89% over the course of 261 months. So if you're telling me that gold is the safe asset, that it protects you against money printing, does it really? How do you interpret that data? All I see is low correlation, but you can achieve low correlation with Bitcoin. You can achieve low correlation with property. You don't have to necessarily buy gold. If you ignore all those waves, then gold underperformed stocks 
by 86% over those 100 years. So truly buying gold is an insurance premium. It's money that you're essentially burning for the benefit of low correlation that you could get elsewhere. I like to present views that aren't that common. If you appreciate this, please give this a like. There's also a free Telegram channel, link is down below.